it's pretty clear that all these therapeutics are fitting nicely into the, uro into the urology space, the urology community, I think, if there is interest, if there is a physician champion, uh, if you will, because I think we all agree that the, that the days of the Renaissance urologists, those that, that want to do everything, are, are probably by the by, especially in the larger groups. And I think this is setting, the, it's, it's setting up nicely for the urology practices to do this, especially given the fact that many of these patients are already housed by us, we're following them. So with that being said, Paul, I'm going to turn it to you. So we've got multiple therapies, um, many approved, many hopefully will be approved, more to come over the next couple of years. So taking that into account, give us a little bit of your views about how, how you look at this in terms of sequencing, how you're looking at immunotherapy within your group, what are your thoughts on immunotherapy, and uh, tell us a little bit about what you, how you manage your patients in relation and the utilization of NCCN guidelines. Well, first, I'm not sure in terms of sequencing that we're going to have any good information for a decade. <clears throat> we're going to have so many approved agents, and the studies are going to be chasing a limited number of patients to come up with those answers. So although I, Dave mentioned earlier the idea of sequencing or not so much sequencing but combinations, I think it's going to take years to prove. So I think we're going to be left alone wondering what is best and I think it still will be a, some of a tough cake to, to mix because the ingredients are multiple. I think for us my question is really what's the role of cytotoxic therapy going forward and until we can prove there's a, an advantage for cytotoxic in combination with some of these other non-cytotoxics, I'm not sure where cytotoxics are going to fall out. Certainly at this point in time less than half the people who succumb to prostate cancer see cytotoxics. The average man who dies from prostate cancer, I believe, is about 80 years of age. So these newer, less toxic agents are highly appealing to our patients. And certainly the data suggests they're superior. So for us, the sequencing is, again, going back to my ADT clinic, to identify the patients early. I think we all agree that most people who are having progressive disease and we think they may succumb are going to do better earlier. We probably have pushed Provenge or Cell T earlier in the paradigm to push them earlier to the forefront. We're now starting to use Zytiga or abiraterone uh, in a pre-chemotherapy setting because of NCCN guidelines. It's just it's an alternative, and that's certainly what people are demanding. Um, I think something like 50% of, of Zytiga is now given pre-chemotherapy. I think enzalutamide, which will probably be here in the next year, is going to be even more revolutionary because it's even easier to manage from my perspective. I think we're managing bone health more easily because of, of using um, denosumab instead of Zometa. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to go in terms of cytotoxics, and so I go back to the, the multidisciplinary clinic. I, I, I'm becoming more, to me, I'm becoming the captain of this ship, and my medical oncologist in the realm of just prostate cancer is clearly, as I describe, on the bench, and I'm still out in the court shooting. So um, I, I think the confusion I have is where my medical oncologist comes on board, and as Neil mentioned earlier, are we going to be the captains of the ship, or are our guys going to totally defer and say, medical oncology take over from day one, particularly when they're using agents like enzalutamide, which is, to me, case of Exxon steroids. You know, my personal thoughts is that I think urologists still, I mean, we need to be engaged. I don't think that we ought to give this up. I think we, we run the risk of marginalizing ourselves in the new order of medicine, however that might look. Uh, Mark, Paul had mentioned something about, and as, as did Neil, about monitoring as well as early identification. Do you have protocols in place within your practice how you try to identify or th these patients early on in terms of trying to get patients on, you know, what I believe probably is a backbone uh, of Exgeva, DMAB, as well as Provenge? Well, we, we do not uh, today, but we are evolving. And I would say, you know, that I would echo something that Neil said a little while ago where we were surprised when we were involved with some of these early studies in looking at our metastatic uh, castrate uh, independent uh, prostate cancers by using the doubling times of PSAs, even though they're very low. They might be, you know, well below one or two nanograms per ml, but when they're doubling, then we look for metastatic disease. We were finding a fair number of them. So with that information, I think that we are now developing PSA doubling rates for our castrate patients and, and imaging those earlier, trying to get them onto studies and trying to treat them sooner.